Savadi Cup and welcome to another episode here for the Funky Pod, Mindful Media and Communication. As you've seen, I'm sticking to a few of the, the topics we discussed so far. We discussed over the past few weeks lots of sports-related topics and today one more. Um, not just sports, also of course media, media theory re related. Um, that's why it fits the podcast. And we're talking about like coaches, coaches being fired, being let go and so on in, in sports. Why? Because, well, it just happened. It happens all the time, actually, when, if, if you're honest in, in sports. So I thought it's interesting to look at like how the media and communication theories, how this plays into like why trainers are being let go, why trainers sometimes choose to go, how you know, maybe sometimes sports teams organizations are forced into this whole thing so that's what we're discussing here today okay so we're tackling that that complex dynamic uh, between media sports communication and focusing on the influence that the media holds over and um, the careers of trainers or officials that work within within an organization okay um, that was triggered by like recent events As you know, I'm German, um, so I do follow German football to some extent and some long-standing coaches just decided to leave their positions in their clubs because their clubs weren't performing as well as, as expected. So I thought it's interesting to see like how, how like maybe pressure builds in media, how the media reacts, how the fans react to using the media and so on. And it's not just football, it's also like the NBA right now. You look at uh, the LA Clippers, for example. I think they're zero and four or zero and five since James Harden arrived, for example. And Tai Lu being now, of course, scrutinized um, very closely. So I think it's time to ask the question like, how much does media actually influence like coaching dismissals and so on? Okay. So let's, let's jump into the current state of affairs, if, if you will. And even if you look at like the coaching job from the outside, it, it looks very cool, at least from my point of view. Sometimes you think like, hey, that's such a cool job. Or you watch Ted Lasso and then you, you, you see, okay, behind the scenes they struggle. But actually, yeah, look at how they're celebrated and so on. So it looks, it looks kind of cool. Um, but beneath that, that cool surface, there's like a very unstable reality, right? So like I said, just this week, for example, Example from Germany, the, the Union Berlin coach left, um, so they decided to part ways. They said um, after five years, after taking them from the second division to the Champions League in football, for example, Mainz, another another um, yeah, traditional club in Germany, um, they just parted ways with with them with their manager too because they were they were last right now for the, after the first ten games or so, um, so. And it's not, it's not always like this. It's sometimes it's like, of course, way faster. Like you, you, yeah, I just ask Julian, Julian Nagelsmann at Bayern Munich, for example, like we stick with the German, the German example. So like, look at the Premier League, like how many coaches they, they're always like, like hiring and firing, right? So it's a very unstable position. And same thing what I said earlier in the intro in the NBA, right? Uh, so you, you see like lots of coaches coming and going and so on. So. It's a very volatile position that a coach is in, and I think it it's interesting to look at like why why this happens. Is it is it just based on performance, or are there other factors at play? Like the coaches are often like hailed as like heroes when the team succeeds and when they I know save the team from relegation, for example, make it to the playoffs and so on. Um, but then on the other hand, very often they're also the villains when when they fail, when the teams don't perform, right? It's like a, it's a zero-sum game uh, to some extent. And, and the stakes are pretty high all the time. That's why you also see, I think, coaches aging very fast once they're like in, in, in a job with lots of responsibility. And the pressure to win is, is immensely high and the margin for error is pretty slim, like if, if, if you're honest. And in this environment, the role of the media, of course, becomes pretty critical. So if, it's, it's like the lens like, through which fans perceive the games, right? It's, the media is the only way that you can interact with, with your club, with your team. So the narrative that shapes understanding of success and failure lies, or that the power of shaping that narrative lies with the media. Okay, and the relationship between a coach performance and their job security isn't always just linear, right? Like external pressure, like expectations of fans, for example, the ambitions of the club, of the owners, and uh, significantly like the portrayal, right? The portrayal of the team's 
fortunes is this it's all in the media it's like all interplay of those things that that decide the coach's fate basically so it begs the question are we talking about a performance-based industry when it comes to coaching or is there more to the story and you probably already guessed my take on it so let's talk about the media's role in in, in the coaching carousel right and this As you mentioned, high sex environment, the, the media plays like this, this dual role, okay? It's both like a mirror reflecting the sports world, okay? And also like a magnifying glass, like just intensifying the heat on coaches. Yeah, so take pundits, like, and let's stick with the NBA for a second, like, like Stephen A. Smith, for instance, okay? Like their, their fury commentary doesn't just fill airtime, it resonates with fans and can offer can also amplify the pressure on team management, of course. And they become part of like the story, like influencers and a narrative that often ends with coaches' departure. It's, but it's not just the NBA, also in football. And again, allow me to give a German example. We have like uh, some experts, like in the Premier League too, right? They always like commenting before and after the game. Like, for example, Lothar Matthäus. You might, if you're into football, you might know him. Like one of the biggest German football stars ever. And he's working for TV right now. And he's commentating on, like, commenting on what's happening, putting pressure on, on, on teams and so on. And the other day, even Bayern Munich coach, the current coach, like Thomas Tuchel, just lost it with him. He's like, if Lothar always talks about this and this and that, huh? and he just lost it. Because, like, of course, those pundits, they're adding pressure and they're shaping opinions via the media, right? The thing is, though, obviously, I also understand that the job of a sports pundit is also pretty complex. Like, let's, let's be fair, right? They analyze, they predict, they criticize, and they also have to entertain to some extent, right? So when a team is struggling, the pundits, they, they don't hold back, right? Right now in the NBA, Clippers are struggling with James Harden, all the pundits jumping on it, right? Like Perkins, um, Stephen A., you name it, everyone, everyone's jumping on it. Of course, because they have to, right? They di dissect like every decision, like why do they play small ball now? Why do they do this? Why do they do that? And, Yeah, and they, they look into every mistake and their words carry weight. Yeah, for many fans, pundits' opinions help form their own opinions, right? You're like, oh, I listened to Stephen A., does it make sense? Oh, yeah, Stephen A.'s got a point, uh, sometimes. So this can lead, of course, to like a, a, like a heightened sense of urgency like among the team's leadership. Like as public opinion changes, sways heavily with what pundits are saying, so that's why also the teams have to listen to that right so how is the how is the public perceiving your team for example but we of course also have to consider the medium itself like marshall McLuhan, the medium is the message we talked about it many a times uh, so the omnipresence of sports media with like round the clock coverage and like instant online reactions like creates i want to say like a rel relentless bust that, that It's impossible to ignore okay like coaches are under the microscope like in a way they've never been before and the thing is like players for example right gen c millennials maybe still they're growing up with those things coaches did not grow up with like social media they're mostly older obviously uh, and so they're not used to that that's also one thing we should we should understand right so they're under the microscope they're not used to it And every decision is scrutinized, looked into. There are TikToks about it, Instagram stories about it, and so on. Like every loss is dissected. And in, in, in such a world, the coach's narrative is not just written by wins and losses, but also by like the stories told about them in the media. Okay, so that's something I think that's pretty unique to the times we live in right now. When we look at, and what we always do here in, in, in the podcast, we look at like some media theories at, at play um, to see and to understand like how the media sways public opinion and maybe even influences the, the fate of coaches. We can turn to a few theories that we discussed before already, right? For example, agenda setting theory, right? It suggests that media may not tell us what to think, but it's quite effective at telling us like what to think about, Okay. So when sports media outlets, for example, like continually focus on, on coaches' potential dismissal, they bring it to the forefront of the public opinion, okay, of the public discourse, setting the agenda that can maybe escalate into like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So they're not saying fire that coach because that might not be super ethical, right? But they can say, 
the team is struggling, will this coach still be around for much longer? And then you, know, you, you do this more frequently. Eventually, the public will say, hey, yeah, I've seen it on SportsCenter now for a week or so. Will this coach be around for much longer? Maybe he shouldn't. Huh. So yeah, that's agenda setting at play in sports media right there, okay? Oh, every time like a, a pundit, right, questions a coach's capability. Like, can Ty Lu really bring like James Harden and Russell Westbrook together? Huh. So they're not saying fire him, but they're like, ah, I'm not sure if he can do it, right? So, or if a headline like speculates about the future, will Ty Lu still be uh, uh, with LA like next season or whatnot, right? It adds like, like a, a new layer to the narrative. Okay, so as that concept then becomes more you know, prevalent uh, in, in media, it starts to like feel like inevitable, right? And this is where the next theory, we talked about it before, spiral of silence, remember that? Theory kicks in, okay? Like it, this theory, spiral of silence, posits that people are more likely to silence their own descending opinions if they believe they are in the minority, creating like an environment where the dominant narrative goes unchallenged, like often to like the, the detriment of the coach, for example. Like if I would say, for example, now I think Ty, Ty Lue is like a great coach, but then I see everybody and their grandma talking about like how Ty Lue has to go. I'm like, oh, hmm. I still like him, but I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to post it anywhere because everyone's hating on him, right? We saw that now in, in Germany in the, the football again, right? So with Union Berlin, like everyone, all the fans are like, no, he's great. We want to stick with the coach. He brought us from the second division to the Champions League. Now we've lost like 17 games or whatever, but we're sticking to him. We love him. But then the media starts talking about like, is it time? Nobody in the media said fire him, but the media was speculating. Is it time? Maybe should they go, should they go separate ways? Now it's a two week break because of the international games. So maybe it's the right time to go separate ways. And then pundits start talking about it. Yeah, he's a great guy. But maybe there needs to be a change. And then that's how they slowly start to talk about it in the media. And then eventually it happens. Okay, so that's agenda setting and spiral of silent theory we discussed so far. Okay, to, to make it three, um, the framing theory, we talked about it also already, right? The framing theory tells us like how, how media can shape the interpretation of news through presentation presentation with which of course the way you present can drastically sway the public's opinion or the, the public sentiment like if the media frames a coach as like struggling or like on the brink it can alter the perception of their performance okay it's not just about the losses but how those losses are portrayed and yeah, the framing can, can turn like a bad season into like a crisis for example and a crisis in the world of sports as you know often ends with someone taking the fall and that very often is not the team because you can't just change the whole team very often it's the coach okay so we had um, agenda setting spiral of silence and framing theory right now okay and I mentioned a few times I want to also focus on this a little bit more like on the pundits themselves okay like the pundits influence on this whole thing so the voice of a pundit every time I say pundit I have Stephen A in my in my mind and there are many more of course right but he's such a loud pundit so the voice of a pundit of course can be like very powerful right so it's a powerful force especially if those pundits are accepted established it's not not just their analysis that matters but their their reputation right their personality and their ability to like persuade the audience like when a pundit like again Stephen a uh, speaks people just listen right? it's also because he yells so much so you have to listen <laughs> but you know what i mean so they, they have a platform that 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 i know reaches millions of people and with that platform comes the power to shape narratives and so their words can echo in the echo chambers of social media okay becoming like then even more amplified and distorted along the way maybe even okay so pundits operate in the realm of like where, where bold statements get more attention than nuanced ones. That's also why if you go on YouTube, for example, and you, if you follow some of those pundits, the thumbnails are always those pundits like yelling or being like surprised or something, having big eyes, right? That, that's why like those bold statements, they capture just more attention, right? So in, in their world, a coach is like, often only as good as the last game, right? Because then you're like, oh my God, it was a terrible game. They lost by 30 and, and so on. So this can create like an environment where management feels the pressure 
to act, to show that they're in control and making decisions, even if, if those decisions are the result of like media pressure, yeah, rather than maybe a recent assessment of like a coach's performance, for example, okay? And yet, though, the role of a pundit is not to be un understated, okay? So they're, they're often like, of course, former players, former coaches, journalists, um, with like a deep understanding of, of the game, of course, right? So they provide insights, they highlight nuances um, of the sport, and they offer like critical analysis, which is good, right? It's a, it's a very delicate like balance between providing thoughtful commentary and like feeding into that sensationalism that can lead to like premature coaching dismissals, for example. And now when we take all this and, and look into like the impact on the game or on the games that we talk, right? So the, the constant the constant churn of coaching dismissals has like a I think a profound impact on on the game. It lead, it can lead to like a like a culture of like short terminism. Is it a thing? Can I say that? I'm not a native speaker, you know that. Um, where like the focus is on on like immediate results rather than the long-term growth and development. It's also a thing in marketing, by the way, in digital marketing. So in the pressure cooker like environment, it's, it's like it, it, it can like stifle innovation because you're like, I need results right now. So you can't plan long-term, right? So this can stifle like innovation, can stifle risk-taking. And why? Because coaches may fear the, the repercussions of a single loss or like a bad season and because no one's looking at the long-term development, Okay. And moreover, the focus also like on, on coaching dismissals can like obscure the, the real issues within a team or like an organization. Yeah, it's easy to replace like a coach than to address like systemic problems, right? Such as like maybe inadequate youth development, for example, poor recruitment or lack of investment. Yeah, so the narrative driven by like the media often like overlooks like those complexities because it's so hard to understand also for the audience. And so they simplify the story to a matter of winning or losing with the coach as like the, the, the linchpin, so to speak. If you're like me, like as a football fan and you play like, for example, football managing games or fantasy managers or whatever, right? Any game, you know that in the beginning, your team usually sucks. <laughs> but if you invest into youth development and so on, and after a few years, you're doing better. In the real world, also in computer games, like in simulations, right? The press talks about like you, oh, maybe the coach has to go and then your the board loses trust with the management. But if you stick it out, eventually you're succeeding. And in the real world, similar, of course, I simplify it, but just no one's sticking it out. Or not many organizations have the patience to stick it out and to stick up for their coach, okay? So I think that's just maybe also something that, that get lost that gets lost here and there once, once in a while, okay? So that's why we also have to consider that the human element, I think, okay? Coaches are more than just, just the sums of their wins and losses. They're like, they're leaders, they're mentors, and they often like the stabilizing force within a team. And I know it's a fictional story, but look at Ted Lasso, for example. I think it's just a nice exaggerated obviously fictionalized example of like how important a coach can be I'm not saying it's always the case but can be right uh, so that, that that rapid dismissal culture that's just fostered by the media right doesn't just affect careers it affects lives it affects families it yeah, affects like the very people who dedicate themselves to the sport and I don't know if you can just stop with that. Obvi I mean, obviously we can't because it generates clicks and views and so on. But I think that's just something to actually take into consideration. You know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm about to close today's episode. So I think it's quite clear that the media's influence on the world of pro sports, on coaching, is pretty profound, right? And, and pretty multifaceted. It's not just like influencing it in one way. And while it can bring attention to like legitimate concerns, of course, it can also like drive a narrative that leads to instability and maybe even knee-jerk reactions. It's, it's like a reminder of, of the power of media in shaping not just opinions, but also outcomes and like, in this case, the high stakes arena of professional sports. That was quite a deep ending. Huh? So I, I hope that makes sense. And I'm really curious to hear like, what you think 
should like I don't know, should pundits take a step back, for example, but then they're not getting as many views, clicks, reads, and so on. Should they be more aware of the power that they possess? Should the media be less agenda driven? But then again, they're getting less likes, shares, clicks, reads, and so on. Because you know, like if only if you have if you have like if you have like strong opinions, then you actually get like lots of reads and clicks and shares and likes and so on. If you're like too too nuanced, people are not going to read you, are not going to share you, because you're not making like any noise, basically, right? So what's the what's the right thing to do here? Or do you think it's a problem? Do you think no? Actually, well, if you're like a professional sports coach in this case, you're also making lots of money. Let's be honest. So grow a pair and and live with it like so what's what's your opinion i'm really curious um yeah so thanks for joining me one one more time don't forget to always like share subscribe leave a comment um that would that, that helps the most um for others to find us again let me know how you feel the media's role in that sports coaching um, carousel should be or is or are you influenced by it As always, take care, stay safe, and we talk soon. Sawadee kap.